I had a labrum hip tear and a tear in the cartilage at the back. The surgeon said he usually operates with 1% of footballers. Lo and behold, I happened to fall into that 1%. I didn't realise the severity of the injury until he went into more detail and how the fact that I was lucky to go this far in my career before I actually had quite a serious injury. But yeah, it was a, a bit of a revelation. It meant I missed the start of pre-season and the season with the team so far. I think for me, obviously getting appointed captaincy and then going straight into an injury has been quite difficult and challenging because it's my first time as a captain. Nine new captains. So Bethany, you're the captain. For me, girls, this is a huge, huge honour. Um, I've humbled. I'm very, very thankful that Robert and, uh, has chosen me to be the captain of this team. And not only have I had to learn to lead off pitch, I'm also having to deal with my own personal battles of fixing my injury. So for me, it's kind of where I can. I've tried to be there for the team. I want everyone to go out there feeling confident, be brave. The pressure's on them to go out there, enjoy your football, play some exciting football, play with freedom and just trust each other. Spurs on three, one, two, three! Spurs! Spurs! It feels great to be there, but also it, it also sucks being the one on the sideline having to watch when you just want to help. But I think I'm still learning on the job. I've still hopefully got a lot more to bring when I am back. Yes! There was a moment just before the end of last season, I remember in the training session specifically, I, it was like one of the last things we did a set piece and I almost like jolted when I went to slow down to stop. In my head, it wasn't that serious because I was able to play through it and play through the pain. We decided it would be best to get a scan and actually have a look at it because it was causing me some issues. As I said, I didn't expect it to be such bad news. Obviously when I found out I had to have the surgery, that really upset me, like there was lots of tears. I felt helpless, I felt debilitated like I couldn't really do anything. I had to just literally sit on my sofa for two weeks which killed me nearly because I'm a very active person, I'm always on the go. I'm not someone that can just really sit there and do nothing. There was one day where I cried for the first time at the training ground with the physio. I'd never show it around the team. It's funny because that was the first day I think I really showed that it was a bit of a struggle. But equally, what was really sweet was that everyone just had my best interest and they were messaging to check in that I was all right. For the first two weeks, I wasn't really allowed to do anything. Steph, my partner, less her, she would lay everything out on the coffee table in the living room so I didn't have to keep getting up and back and forth from the kitchen. She had so much to do and probably hated me because I was a very miserable person and that's obviously no reflection on her but it was just the frustrations of wanting to play. The toughest thing was relying on other people to help me when I'm usually such an independent person. So obviously we first started off with on the crutches. I had the crutches for four weeks. So I think my first bit of freedom was when I could finally get off them. So I'll save this and bring it back round. If you want to come Can we, oh no, you can do it now. No, no, I'll look at the left and right leg. So we'll go back and look at your other scan from before, but I think your difference in your left and right leg was about 0.3 before. So, so far we think it's good. Yes, you've done well. And what I was saying is it's been good that you can actually move and you haven't been in like a brace where you've been completely in my That life. first week though, I barely moved. Yeah. And I hated every yeah. minute of it. Go me. Yeah. Going from that, we moved then to more pool rehab. So then I started being able to start swimming for the first time, which was very tough. I do back myself as a good swimmer, but when I'm having to use a float so that I can't actively use my legs and just swimming with my arms is proving to be quite a tough test. No, I've got a hold up. Being a footballer, you don't ever want to be sat on the sidelines, whether that's through injury or on the bench, you want to be on the field playing. I'm just itching to get back out there and do what I know I can and that score goals for the team. I think it's the old cliche of you don't know what you've got till it's gone type thing where obviously you're kind of battling your own fight of trying to make sure that you get through your injury okay but also having to sit there and watch every week then when there's games where they are struggling a bit and you feel you can 
impact and help and you're helpless being sat on the sidelines, that's probably when it's been the most difficult. To see how well the team have been doing has brought me a lot of pride because I felt like last year there was probably a lot of pressure to sustain not getting relegated, whereas this year we've got a, a different setup, we've got a new manager, we're putting in much better performances as a whole, which makes it much easier, I think, transitioning back into and not having the same amount of pressure as what I probably had when I first joined the team. But I think we've got a lot more sturdy ground, like a good base platform to start with and hopefully we can kick on. Go strong leg, I went strong leg. Being able to run on the treadmill for the first time, which felt like a massive weight off, finally starting to be able to move and see how the hip will cope with a little bit of weight bearing. From there, we then go on to a little bit of pitch running, but alongside that, we're also doing the alter G. So again, weight bearing percentage differs on, on where we start and being able to go full body weight, running through and having no issues with the hip is, is, was, a, was a big target. <laughs> I've got a really good relationship with Robert. I find him really easy to talk to and if I have any concerns or anything I need to run past him, I'm more than comfortable and confident enough to go and have those conversations and I think he feels the same if he feels that maybe because I know the players a little bit better than him that I've worked with longer and he asks for my advice on things. We just have a good catch up usually on game days, just how the team's feeling, what he expects from the game and obviously for myself coming back into the team soon hopefully I'm still having to learn what his methods are as much as you see it every day and listen to it in team meetings, actually being on the pitch and acting out what it is that he expects from the team are two different things. So we're constantly having conversations about what it is that they need from me and what role I'll be playing and stuff. So there's lots of things to discuss, but I've got a great relationship with him. The funny thing was is I didn't even think about not loading that hip. I was just so excited to run that I just kind of set off. Tom was just like, you need to slow down. And I was just like, no, I'm fine. I'm, I'm just going. But they were like, no, you, you need to slow down. So for me, it felt good to just be able to move again. There was an adjustment period where I think when I first started running and getting back on the grass that I could tell there was a difference and trying to open my hip out to hit a ball. There was definitely concerns that I wasn't going to be able to play the same way that I did beforehand. So my hip actually feels fine, yeah, I've not, not felt anything. Um, I think it's just getting used to being on a pitch again in boots and having my ankles taped. I'm expected to be a bit sore, obviously. It's been a long time since all my body weights ran through it, so yeah, as it stands, all good. Have you missed being back on the grass? Yeah, as I've missed it more than, probably more than I thought I would. I know I'd always miss it, but it's actually really hard. And I think, obviously, externally to everyone, you don't want to show people that, not that you're not struggling, but that it's, that you're okay. But I say I take my hat off to people that have longer term injuries or have done, like, say, ACLs and things like that, because for me, this has been the hardest, probably three months I've probably had to, go through with an injury, just got to keep pushing, keep trusting that everything's going as it should and when I'm allowed to finally be back on the pitch, I'll, uh, I'll get on the pitch, so. The other day I joined in for my first 11 v 11 and that felt great to be in with the team. But it felt nice to finally be part of the team and with the team on the field. There's so many landmarks, I think, because in the gym I've been able to get stronger, whether that's just upper body, being able to do more chins or bench press higher or squat heavier. And I feel like one blessing that I've taken out of rehab is that I've been able to work so much individually on strengthening all other areas that I feel like it will effectively help me on the pitch when I'm back.
Robert, the standout name on the team sheet tonight is a return for Beth England. You've got that smile. How good is it to have her back on your side? Um, it is amazing. I mean, she's uh, a great footballer, but also a great leader for us. So I'm very pleased to have her back. From the first whistle to the last, we stick together because the strength in numbers. Let's go, girls. Come Let's on. Go Come on. on. I just remember being stood in the tunnel locking down but I'd got my mascot and she was freezing bless her so I gave her my jacket and it was like you know what it's a bit surreal walking out as the captain for Tottenham for the first time was a really proud moment for me I would definitely say it was when the kickoff went that it's like okay this is it now you're back it's go time